In this video, I'll be continuing my in-depth exploration of Leonardo AI, the AI image generator. I'll guide you through the remaining settings covering topics such as prompt generation, tiling, seed usage, image to image generation and control net. In addition, I'll provide a walkthrough of AI canvas and texture generation. So, let's go! Prompt generation is a way for Leonardo to assist you in creating more effective prompts. Let's consider the prompt Cute Panda as an example. It's not particularly imaginative. I'll ask Leonardo to improve it. Here's how. Click on Prompt Generation and input the prompt. You can specify the number of prompts you want Leonardo to create. So let's say two. Leonardo generates two prompts that provide a bit more context. You can click on the button next to each prompt to generate an image based on that prompt. Here are the outcomes for both the prompts I generated. Activating the tiling toggle will make the generated images tileable, which is perfect for creating textures and backgrounds. Let's compare these two images I generated using a simple prompt like bluebells. The first one was generated without the tiling option. As you can see, the bluebells are positioned in the center, which would lead to a disrupted pattern if I use it in a tiling arrangement. This image, on the other hand, was generated with the tiling option on. When I try to create a pattern from this image, the outcome is much more harmonious. Through the image to image option, you can generate an image using another image as its base, but you will still need a text prompt. What Leonardo tries to do here is to fulfill the prompt conditions, but based on the input image. Here's how it works. You provide an image and a prompt, then click on the Generate button. To demonstrate, I'll use one of the pre-generated community images. So, let's choose this one here and send it to image to image As you can see, it takes over both the prompt and the image. A very important setting is the init strength. This parameter determines how closely the generated image resembles the source image. If the value is set to low, the resulting image will be entirely different from the initial image. If you set it to the highest setting, nothing will change. A good setting would be around 0.5 or 0.6. So, let's hit generate with the init strength at its lowest. The image turned out different, but still adhering to the text prompt we gave it. Now let's try again with the init strength at a maximum. The image will be exactly the same as the input image. Now, if I put the init strength on 0.5, it gives me an image that still resembles the original, but with some slight differences. So. Image to image generation is a great feature that you can use if you have a very specific image in mind that you want to use as a base, but have the AI apply some creative changes to it. ControlNet is a feature that replicates specific patterns within an image and then generates an entirely new image based on that pattern. It comes with two settings. First one is ControlNet weight which determines how much ControlNet influences the prompt. A value of 1 increases ControlNet's influence. A lower value makes Leonardo less bound to ControlNet, allowing for a greater creativity in matching the prompt. Personally, I like keeping it at a 1 to get full advantage of ControlNet. The second setting can be found under this drop-down list here, with three options available. These options are the ControlNet preprocessors. They add extra conditions to the model that you are using to give you more control over the images it generates. I've uploaded an image of the Tower of Babel and activated ControlNet. As a preprocessor, I'm selecting Depth to Image. 
My prompt describes a beautiful, colorful wedding cake with vibrant colors and fruit. Leonardo produces an image of a wedding cake sharing the same shape and depth as the Tower of Babel. So, this preprocessor analyzes the depth of an input image and uses it as a control map to create 3D effects for the output image. Now, let's consider another image of a woman waving. I've chosen Pose to Image as the preprocessor. My prompt is a photo of a Viking warrior standing by a lake and holding a sword. Here's my output. The sword might seem a little bit peculiar, but the pose closely resembles that of the woman. Pose to Image works best with images of humans. It detects the human pose and uses it to replicate the pose in your generated image. Finally, let's explore the last option, which is Edge to Image. This function examines the edges or contours of an image and employs them as a guide to generate the output image. To demonstrate, I'll use an image containing just a text, which is AI is great. In my prompt, I'll simply input brick wall. ControlNet uses this information to place the text on the brick wall, creating the illusion that it's actually part of the wall's construction. And I think it's a really cool feature. When an AI creates images, the scheduler is like the plan it follows to turn text into pictures. It begins with a messy, noisy canvas and then slowly improves it to match the text. This process is called denoising and each denoising round is called a step. If you go into the advanced options at the bottom, you'll see different schedulers that Leonardo can use. The default one is called Leonardo but you can pick others that you might recognize from other image-making AIs, like Stable Diffusion, for example. When you choose a different scheduler than Leonardo, a step count shows up over the control net toggle. This tells the scheduler how many cleaning steps to make in the denoising process. A bigger number doesn't always make a better picture. Somewhere around 20 to 30 steps is often a good choice. Let's try it out. This is what the Leonardo scheduler produces with a beautiful underwater scene with colorful fish. If I change that to DDIM, I get a good result as well. However, the image does look a bit different. You can experiment with different schedulers to find out which one you like best. So far, I'm sticking to the Leonardo scheduler. One more setting you can find by expanding the advanced settings is the seed. The seed represents the starting information that guides how the image is made. This means if you use the same seed under the same conditions, you will get the exact same image again. Without the seed, each time you create an image under the same conditions, it will be different. A seed is indicated by a number. So, when people refer to seeds, they are talking about the number that is linked to your image. But why would you even want to use a seed? You can use it to tweak the image a little bit, making small changes without completely changing the image. Also, it's a good way to experiment with Leonardo settings and see how they influence the same image. Imagine you created an image of a steaming bowl of ramen soup and you like it, but you wish the bowl was on a white surface. Or maybe you want to give it a different style, like making it vibrant instead of cinematic. All you have to do is copy the seed from the image and paste it into the seed section in the advanced settings. Just make sure to turn on the toggle for using a fixed seed. Now you can start experimenting. So, let's try the white surface. There you go, the same ramen bowl, but on a white surface. If I put the prompt back as it was, so without the addition of a white surface, it will generate the exact same image as before. Now, let's go for a vibrant style. If you compare the three variations, vibrant and cinematic styles look almost identical. 
The one in the middle with the adjusted prompt has a different surface, but the rest of the image is very similar. Let's talk about one of my favorite features in Leonardo, AI Canvas. There's so much to explore about this tool that I'll likely dedicate a separate video to it. For now, I'll provide you with a sneak peek. Accessing the AI Canvas editor is very straightforward. You can either click on AI Canvas on the left and upload an image, or you can go into the community feed or your personal feed, select an image, click on the three dots and choose Edit in AI Canvas. The highlight of AI Canvas is its ability to expand images using AI. Actually, I've never seen any other AI image generator capable of doing that. Imagine you've generated a picture of a bustling city street, but you're not pleased with its dimensions. In the AI Canvas, position a rectangle over the part that you want to extend, but make sure you're covering about half of it with the rectangle, so that the AI can use that as a reference. In the prompt, you can write Continue Image. When you hit Generate, the AI will extend the image. Given that I set the image count to 4, I now get to choose from 4 options. You can of course reduce the number of choices if you like. Now you can repeat this process for the remaining parts of the image until you're happy with the dimensions. Once you're done, you can download the resulting image by clicking this button on the left. Here's a comparison of the two images. There's so much more you can do with AI Canvas, such as correcting images or adding elements and other really cool options. But I will cover those in a separate video. Texture creation in Leonardo is currently in alpha mode, which means it's in early development stages and it's not fully featured and may have bugs. It's also resource intensive in terms of tokens, so be mindful of that. While texture creation isn't very relevant to me, I'll give you a quick rundown. It generates various textures for 3D objects that find use in video games, virtual reality or even in 3D printing. To use it, you'll need a 3D object stored in an object file, which is a 3D version of an image file like PNG or JPEG. For demonstration, I'll download a free 3D model from a website called Free3D. I'll leave you the link in the description. Once you have your object file, you have to give it a prompt. Be aware that you can't use the same type of prompts as an image generation. This feature creates object textures, not new images. So you have to give it a prompt that describes a texture. Generating a new texture will use 30 tokens. However, there's a preview option that only covers part of your 3D object, but it will use only 5 tokens, letting you try out a few different options before spending 30 tokens. I experimented with prompts like metallic, wooden panels and lush green plants, and I decided on a plant texture from my cottage. Generating it took a very long time, but this is the result. Since I don't often work with 3D objects, I'm uncertain about the outcome's quality. To me, it doesn't look great. Regardless, I wanted to try out this feature and show you how it works. In my next video, I'll show you how you can train your own model. So make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss out. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you join me again soon.